What's going on everybody? It's Kyle Vinnick and we checking out the Red Magic 9 Pro. It was released in November of 2023 and I've been using it for about a month now. I got the Cyclone color option which is the transparent black but it also comes in sleet and snowfall. Starting off with the build, we got an aluminum frame, glass back, it weighs at 229 grams, it features dual sims, and an overall boxy design. Starting at the top of the phone, we have a microphone, one of the stereo speakers, an IR blaster, and a headphone jack. On the left, we have a vent for the built-in cooling fan. On the bottom, you find your uh, SIM tray, USB-C port, a microphone, and one of the loudspeakers. And on the right side is a little more interesting. We got two shoulder buttons, which are capacitive, one of the vents for the cooling system, the volume rocker, a circular power button, and a gaming switch. And as you can tell, we got some nice RGB lighting going on. And if you go in the settings, you could adjust the lighting modes and the colors. And the overall design on the back, it gives it a real advanced futuristic type of phone. Now starting off with the display, it has a built-in fingerprint sensor. It's not the best under display fingerprint sensor I've used. So you're gonna have some errors from time to time. But we're looking at a 6.8 inch AMOLED display fresh rate of 120 hertz with a peak brightness of 1600 nits the resolution is 1116 by 2480 pixels giving you a 400 ppi density i like how all the corners on the display is almost sharp so you get a more immersive display and that goes really well when you're gaming overall quality of display is nice and vivid punchy colors coming from a 15 pro max i could tell a major difference in the saturation levels hopping back on in the Red Magic 9 Pro. And then at the top of the display, we have a 16 megapixel camera, and I almost forget about it because it's under the display. That's some real nice tech going on, but I wouldn't expect any clearer pictures from the selfie cam. So onto the specs, we're packing that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, paired with a Adreno 750 GPU. And my variant has that 512 gigabyte internal storage, and that configuration hits you with the 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's running that Android 14 with the Red Magic OS 9. They pack the highlighting customizations within the theme settings. From there, you can customize the lock screen, the app icons, the light strips, and more. Now, when you flick up that gaming switch, it'll instantly put you in gaming mode. So the layout and the settings is gonna focus primarily on gaming. I like how with each individual game, you have your personalized settings only for that specific game. And when you reopen that same game, you don't have to keep changing the settings. And within that same pop-up setting, that's when you configure the shoulder triggers. Not only you can customize the location where it triggers, but you can also customize the function, whether you want a single tap or a rapid fire. And the overall package gives you an engaging gaming experience. The most intensive gaming app that I use on this phone it's something like Genshin Impact or Devil May Cry. And so far, this phone does a good job keeping up with these games. And aside from the processor, that's thanks to the cooling system. There are two fan speeds, and I normally have it on the low speed when I'm casually using the phone. And then when I have it in gaming mode, I have it on turbo. You will hear some noise through the fan, even in low speed, but I never had any overheating issues with this phone. It does get hot, but nothing too concerning. Onto the battery, we're packing a 6,500 milliamp hour. I don't always do heavy gaming on this phone, but when I do, I would say the overall battery life is about four hours of usage. This being a dedicated gaming phone, I would rather have the ports like the USB-C port and the headphone jack at the left side of the phone. So that way, when you have your phone horizontally while gaming, as opposed to having the cables on the sides, you have the cables dangling away from you. But this phone includes an 80 watt brick charger and that'll hit 100% in just 35 minutes. With any other phone, that charging speed is already crazy fast. But for this being a gaming phone, that super fast charging is real convenient. So onto the camera system, we have three different sensors, 50 megapixel wide, 50 megapixel ultra wide, and a two megapixel macro lens. We're so used to seeing at least one lens being a telephoto, so this phone is not going to have any crispy zooms. But honestly, the overall quality of these photos is not that good to begin with. I mean, when you have really good lighting, it's good. But in most situations, when you're indoors, you can tell that the camera is struggling. If this was just any other phone, then it would be a concern. 
but the performance and the focus on the gaming features, it'll make most people dismiss the camera quality. Overall, I think Nubia did a really good job focusing on the gaming aspects of this phone. I wouldn't recommend it for most users just because with the cooling system, you're not even going to have any splash resistance. But aside from that, the heavy gamers are going to love this phone. The built-in fan and the shoulder triggers are signature features that you won't find on any other phone. And with the 12 gigabytes of RAM, the phone starts at 750 and that's a major difference compared to the other flagships. And you're still getting a premium build with a unique design. So let me know if you guys would rock a Red Magic 9 Pro in 2024. As always, comment down below and let me know what you think about the video. And make sure you're subscribed for the latest. Later!